the EV Australia desperately needs the affordable tiny city runaround is finally here. But only one of them. Mitsubishi just quietly slipped one in, so to speak, for evaluation purposes. But it probably won't ultimately be sold here because the giant automotive incinerator of taxpayer cash, ANCAP, is either going to gut the vehicle's reputation or make it unaffordable. And the thing that sticks deep in my anus over this particular issue is that it's actually a very safe, albeit diminutive car, on objective fundamentals. So that kind of sucks. I'm John Logan from Auto Expert. Come to you, Newcastle Cheap, Australia only. Website, come on. Mitsubishi Motors, Australia Limited. Let's just call them Mal, double M A L. They just imported a little K car EV circuitously from Japan. It's got a nonsense name, of course. The E K X EV, little E, big K, big X EV. They should give it a proper. Fuck you, Aussie name, just for starters. Allow me to assist. Henceforth, I dub thee the Mitsubishi Runt. Rhymes with, you know, front, blunt, brunt, shunt, etc. See you next time, dude. The Runt is the kind of vehicle a serial killer would drive in Lilliput. It's only 3.4 metres long, and it's about 1.4 wide and 1.65 high. This means a Toyota Corolla is roughly one metre longer than the rhymes with. And it's roughly 300 millimetres wider as well. So it's a pretty small but tall thing, the runt. The runt weighs just over 1,000 kilos. That's the EV version. That's roughly about the same as the shittest Toyota Yaris money can buy. The runt seats four from memory. It's got a 20 kilowatt hour battery. So hypothetically, you could cut the battery on a morbidly obese Polestar 4 into five pieces... Pro tip, bad idea, dude. Stand well back if you see someone attempting it. Each of those five pieces would be sufficient to power a Mitsubishi Runt. The Runt drives up to 180 k's on a single full charge. It has a 47 kilowatt motor and it reaches a top speed, if you are exceptionally brave, of 130 k's an hour. Imagine that on those 155-65 R14 tyres. <laughs> Nobody sets a lap record in the runt. Yet, this is exactly the kind of EV we need on our roads. We need a frickin' armada of them if we are to make a dent in urban air quality and or reduce vehicle CO2 emissions. That's pretty clear. But it's probably not going to happen because, you know, assholes. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Cyber threats are very real and we are all exposed to them every day. But you absolutely do not have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures, and that's what NordVPN does in the background. You don't need to understand it, you just need the protection. Data encryption, hidden IP address, everything locked down, nice and secure. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Grab the two-year plan at a massive discount, plus four extra months free, and an additional surprise gift. I don't know what it is. Let me know if you sign up. NordVPN.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. You subscribe, you download the app and you connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded and your online traffic is masked with NSA level encryption across as many as six of your devices. Nord is of course the fastest VPN on the planet and it costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity, and your devices secure. 
your location will be masked, and this means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score great deals on travel and accommodation which are not offered at home. That kind of thing happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your online security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time and that surprise gift. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Thanks very much to Nord for sponsoring this report. To understand what's really going on here, we need to get a few things straight. The car industry, with very few exceptions actually, is busily deploying these huge planet-killing EVs with massive batteries and price tags to mat. It's a burlesque freak show of climate action irrelevance. The Kia EV9 and the EV6, the Polestar 3 and Polestar 4, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Ioniq 6, Tesla Model Y, the Cybertruck, the F-150 Lightning and the preposterous Hummer EV. This is not how we conserve precious resources or rapidly electrify a vehicle fleet. It's just not. We cannot cut CO2 in this way. It's an insult to efficiency and the environment in a cloak of quasi Thunberg appeasement. We actually need tiny EVs that are affordable. Affordable means having a relatively small battery because the battery is obviously the most expensive component in an EV. The Mitsubishi Runt is just Goldilocks on this. I could drive a Runt to my local shops or the train station and back 25 fucking times before I needed to recharge it. And from flat to full probably takes, I don't know, like three hours on a single phase wall box charger at 32 amps, which is roughly seven kilowatts. The runt would take me to the Sydney CBD and back at least three times in between plug-ins. And I live about 25 k's away from the Sydney CBD. The, t the second thing you need to know is why the Runt will probably not be sold here, obviously. Mitsubishi's main reservation to selling it here is something of a paradox, too. If they sell it here as is, it'll be affordable, but probably rated three stars on safety by ANCAP. And that's not objectively terrible, except if you listen to ANCAP's bullshit on this, personal opinion. If Mal gets the mothership, MMC, to engineer the runt up to five stars by adding the required useless and infuriating driver assistance technology, that's probably going to turn a 30 grand runt into a $45,000 runt. And obviously, at 30 grand, a runt would be great value, while at 45 an MG4 Excite 51 is actually looking pretty good, right? The thing is, the runt is not unsafe as it is now. In fact, Japan's NCAP, JNCAP, evaluated the financial year 2022 EV runt and it gave it five stars and awarded it a score of 88% on, quote, collision safety performance and 94% on, quote, preventive safety performance. This is the 2022 Runt EV, the one Mitsubishi Motors Australia Limited has here for evaluation. And none of this is ancient history, therefore. The Runt has MMC's so-called RISE architecture, that's capital R, capital I, capital S, capital E, which stands for Reinforced Impact Safety um, Evolution, I think. And yeah, they do need to work a lot harder with these absurd names, but the crashworthiness of this car is remarkably good for a vehicle this small, and in my view, they should freaking well be congratulated for this, as opposed to kicked in the slats, especially by a non-regulatory 
incinerator of taxpayer cash. I'm just going to talk you through this next bit because it's kind of important. These are excerpts from the official 2022 JNCAP test of the runt. This is the EV version of the runt, right? The one Mal has here, the EKX EV, or rhymes with. We see here the runt braking automatically for a fake cyclist. Actually, it's doing it twice. Make that three times, dude. The same thing with a fake pedestrian. And also a fake child pedestrian. And a fake pedestrian at night. The runt also effectively resists the temptation to liberace a fake car and even a second attempt to slip one in quietly from close range. You dirty little scoundrel. Here we see the technically difficult bilateral Liberace, as it's known in the trade, is also effectively thwarted by the runt. The runt has lane keeping assistance, and if you manage to snot Ayers Rock at 50 kilometres per hour, or a big offset deformable block of aluminium that, I don't know, falls off the back of a truck, at 64 k's an hour, you'll probably live long enough to admit you were driving like a total dick at the time to the cops. And if an out of control sled snots you without warning from the side while you are on the hunt for your next Lilliputian victims, you'll probably be okay to slip your murder kit back into the glove box before inconvenient questions are raised about why you actually need all of that duct tape and those zip ties. The runt performs okay for whiplash and if someone fires their head at your bonnet from a cannon at close range or throws their dismembered leg at your grill, it's probably not as bad for them as doing the same thing to a full-sized serial killer in a Ford Ranger wild track. Pro tip dude, there's no such thing as an absolute frame of reference, just saying. So, on objective grounds, the Mitsubishi Runt EV is safe, as in safe enough, not stripped of fundamental safety tech, not a safety shitbox, well equipped even. It crashes okay and it avoids crashes okay, at the very least. It's a city car for short fucking trips, like, let's put it in perspective. Bringing it here should thus be a complete no-brainer. It is the EV we need, not the morbidly obese shitbox EVs increasingly on our electrified menu. So, what exactly is this problem? I would argue that the problem is ANCAP again. Under ANCAP's absurd safety scheme, this vehicle lacks what ANCAP says is sufficient ADAS to score five stars. ADAS, of course, stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Who doesn't want that? Until you learn, of course, that they're the annoying, badly engineered half-baked tech that just beeps at you and false alarms atrociously, continuously, like a bad freaking prototype, forcing you to take your eyes off the road for shit that absolutely doesn't matter and otherwise overzealously distracts you as you drive. I've just driven three brand new cars down my street, okay? And they all tell me on a particular bend in a quiet 50k an hour suburban street, I'm doing like 40 and they all tell me, loudly, that I am imminently to crash into parked cars as I approach a bend. These sorts of warning do not help me to drive more safely, but they do help the car maker to earn more safety stars. Icons in the instrument cluster go red. They beep urgently. And the only problem here is I've lived here for 20 fucking years there's always parked cars there, and I have never fucking well crashed into any of them. It's never even been close. Silly me, perhaps, for driving so damn dangerously. Additionally, 
I've just driven two new Hyundais, okay? And they read the speed signs. They've got this tech, Kia's got it as well, because they're all the same under the hood. Let's say you enter a 60 zone in one of these vehicles at 62, okay? Indicated 62, which let's not forget, is probably about 58 or 59, given the way speedos actually work. So, not actually speeding at all, but getting blasted by ADAS for it dozens of times every hour. And alarm sounds every time, four times, four big fat beeps. It's annoying. It's very fucking annoying. More annoying even than lane keeping assistance, which I did think at the time was peak fucking annoying. And you can, of course, turn this speed warning system off. About 15 menus in, there's a setting, and you toggle a little switch, so yay. Unfortunately, every time you restart the car, it reverts to active. ANCAP demands that these systems function in this way, like always on at startup. You can set up a shortcut in the menu system to turn this particular one off. That only requires you to take your eyes off the road for about 10 fucking seconds if you forget to do it every time before you drive off. So safe, right? This is the kind of Orwellian driving nightmare being foisted upon us by ANCAP. ANCAP used to be worthwhile, like 20 years ago, but now, in my estimation, it's little more than an incinerator for the funds that you raise for the government by working hard and paying your income tax. We will pay ANCAP more than three million bucks every year until financial 2027-28 20, to continue to promote this kind of half-baked vehicular atrocity. There is no evidence that ADAS saves lives, none. There's never been more ADAS on the road, and yet the Australian road toll appears to be rising. So, well done. 2023 was the deadliest year on Australian roads in more than five years. In our most populated state, New South Wales, road death rose by almost 25 fucking percent. When you buy your next car, you're paying for that annoying, ineffective ADAS. Probably about ten to 15000 bucks per car. Car makers want that five-star rating because ANCAP, incorrectly in my view, strenuously promotes the bullshit message that anything less than five stars is unacceptable. This begs a somewhat obvious question. Why have five stars plus zero, so a total of six levels, if the rating system is, in fact, actually binary? If the ratings are five stars or death trap, why bother with four, three, two, one, and zero stars? Between the start of 2023 and now, ANCAP, insofar as I can tell, and I did have a big fat look this morning, awarded new ratings to 34 cars. So that's the full 2023 and the first two months of 2024, 34 cars, okay, were rated. Very few of these cars could be categorised as mainstream cars that sell in any kind of volume. They're not overall, in my estimation, the kinds of cars which ordinary Australians like you or me might buy. This is your tax dollars at work, okay? Of those 34 ratings, which took 14 months to produce and probably cost you, the taxpayer, $4 million, only four of them were actually tested by ANCAP. They would be the Cherry Tiggo 7 Pro, the Mahindra Scorpio, the MG5, and the GWM Havel Jolion. How's that an advertisement for mainstream relevance? What happened to the other 30? The other 30 ratings on that list are essentially a cut and paste from tests done overseas by Euro NCAP. This is an atrocious misuse of public funds, in my view. Four ratings plus a bunch of cutting and pasting, like, come on. 
You don't have to take my word for this. In fact, I suggest you don't. ANCAP has a list of its press releases on its website by year. Just go through all of them from 2023 to 2024. That's what I did. I looked at the images of the crashed cars. Now, if they're wearing the Euro NCAP logo, those crashed car images in those reports, they were not tested here. And that would be 30 out of 34 of them. Cut and pastes of freaking convenience. Not because many Australians are going to buy an Alfa Romeo Tonali or three-prong EQS or a Mustang Mark E. They're just not. Furthermore, Australia is not Europe. The driving conditions and the vehicle mix, well, they're very different. ANCAP appears to have simply limited itself onto Euro NCAP as a convenience to cut and paste like a frog in a friggin' blender. So, well done. ANCAP also apparently thinks it's the dog, and the car industry perversely behaves as if it, like car makers, comprise the tail. They're all shit scared of disagreeing with ANCAP and its bullshit political manoeuvring because five-star ratings sell cars and individually they do not want to be ANCAP's next taxpayer-funded political target. Like they don't want to be ANCAP's next hit piece. This means, balance of probability, your next car is going to be the most annoying new vehicle that you have ever owned because ANCAP is addicted to ADAS. Actually, ANCAP is the, the pusher here. Car makers are the addicts and you're just the bunny having what could be a far more pleasant and focused driving experience enthusiastically ruined. There's a worrying sort of quasi-religious dimension to ANCAP's enthusiasm for ADAS. They believe in ADAS in the absence of any real evidence that ADAS is saving lives. My own view is that if you want to believe in some fairy in the sky, then you go, girl. However, in a complex complex transportation system involving machines and roads and Newtonian mechanics, it's probably a lot better to go only where the evidence takes you on this if you want fewer people injured. If you're a car maker, you can build a car that crashes like a five-star car and yet it gets three stars because it's just not sufficiently fucking annoying. And you, the bunny actually funding this whole shit show, both by buying the car and paying for ANCAP to comport itself in the manner of some somewhat unhinged automotive Kim Jong-un, you don't get any say in how you want your car to behave. You just told, dude, this is safety, you will like it. And to me, that's fucking Orwellian. At the very least, we need to develop a new and more honest acronym for ADAS. I suggest we roll with Fundamentally Useless Car Control Warning Information Technology Systems. That seems about right to me. How'd you go with your runt, mate? Oh, a bit of a mixed bag. She crashed like a bastard, but we screwed the pooch with our fuquits again. Imagine coming to Australia with English as your second language and just trying to grapple with a conversation like that, like straight off the boat. Like, what for your fuquits be screwing your pooch, doesn't it? Dude, what you have to understand, if that's you, of all the dialects of the King's English, Australian is the most deeply nuanced. Anyway, the Mitsubishi Runt is the diminutive K-car serial killer EV Australia desperately needs, but we're probably not going to get it because it will simply cost too much to jam it full of sufficiently annoying and ineffective fuquits 
to appease the taxpayer-funded cash incinerator and Euro NCAP cut and paste factory that's been allowed to delude itself into thinking it's some kind of big dog wagging the car industry's tail and thereby keeping Australian roads safe by making driving more distracting and annoying. If you actually believe safety could be improved in this way, perhaps I can interest you in a cheap harbour bridge or an opera house. Anyway, I find this state of fucked up affairs especially egregious because ultimately I'm all about making Australia less shit. This is a fiasco and ultimately you are paying for it. Isn't it awesome living here in the golden age of bullshit?